Welcome to the Stations of the Cross. This evening we're following the meditations in the booklet that you may have picked up from church and from uh, walk, Walking the Way of the Cross, which is a book of meditations by Julian Chilcott Monk. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, our Saviour, we gather before you asking your mercy for ourselves and for your whole church, living and departed. As we walk with you on the way of the cross and consider your sufferings, grant us a share in all its merits. The road we intend to follow was marked by your sweat and blood. He saw you despised and rejected by men. Give us the spirit of true repentance. Help us to receive with joy all the crosses and humiliations which have come to us in our pilgrimage through this life, knowing that we are made one with you in your suffering. O Lord, come to our aid. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. When I survey the wondrous cross, on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gains I count but loss, and pour contempt on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the cross of Christ my God, all the vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice them. To his blood. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet, or thorns compose so rich a crown? Were the whole realm of nature mine, that were an offering far too small, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. The first station. Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. When Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And the people answered, his blood be on our hands and on our children. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Jesus stands before Pilate, there through envy and fear, there because we are in the crowd, baying for his blood and for the release of Barabbas. There is a fine irony because Jesus is to take the place of Barabbas, who is our representative, and pay the price of our sin. Those who pay for blood are those who will be saved by that very blood. Perhaps we do not remain in that crowd. Perhaps we simply run from the scene, while Pilate, though fascinated by Jesus and loath to condemn him, washes his hands as the crowd eagerly accepts responsibility on our behalf. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. God did not spare his own Son, but delivered him up for us all. At the cross her station keeping, stood the mournful mother weeping, close to Jesus at the last. The second station, Jesus is made to bear the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. They took Jesus and went out bearing his own cross to the place that called the skull, which is in Hebrew Golgotha. 
and as one from whom men hid their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. He bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. By the time that Jesus receives the cross, he is mocked, and robe and crown of thorns, and soundly whipped. The cross is lowered over his shoulder, onto his bruised and bleeding body. The wounds around his head are causing raging headache, which will continue until his dying grasp. He can but squint. These are the effects of man's sin, now to be borne away by Jesus to Golgotha. He staggers like a drunken man. Doubtless the crowd finds this amusing. As he tries to adjust the weight of the cross, he finds he has little to control little control over his limbs. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. For the transgression of many people, he was stricken. Through her soul, of joy bereaved, bowed with anguish, deeply grieved, now at length the sword had passed. The Third Station Jesus falls for the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, and yet he opened, he opened not his mouth, like a lamb that is led, led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that is before its shearers, he is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He had to be made like his brethren in every respect, to atone for his sins, the sins of the people. It's not surprising that Jesus, weakened beyond endurance, is unable to keep his feet. He falls. The soldiers roughly pull him up to his feet. In any event, he is determined to complete his mission and has absolute confidence and trust in God the Father. His resolve is undiminished. Once on his feet again, he can only lurch from one footfall to the next. Do we rush from the crowd, anxious to do something for him? The custody soldier ponders this problem. He must do something if the crucifixion is to be completed within the allotted time. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. O oh, that blessed one, grief laden, blessed mother, blessed maiden, maiden, mother of the all holy one. The fourth. The fifth station, Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus to carry his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. And as they led him away, they seized one Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. And Jesus said to all, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and daily follow me. Jesus finds movement increasingly difficult, his burden and aggravated by each step. His burden is aggravated by each and every step. The custody soldier decides he must act and hauls a bystander, probably an unwilling one, from the crowd to assist Jesus. What fear is felt by this man, Simon of Cyrene? He, along with all the others, 
is visiting Jerusalem for the celebration of the Passover. Simon is picked because he is there, to hand. The soldier probably scarcely looked at him, unwilling though he may be. Simon acts out before us what is our general vocation, to carry one another's burdens in accordance with Jesus' own entreaty. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Whoever cannot bear his own cross and come before me cannot be my disciple. Who on Christ's dear mother gazing, in her trouble so amazing, born of woman, would not weep. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Truly I say to you, as you did it one to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and yet the world knew him not. He became his own home, he came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become the children of God. Now the procession suffers another hiatus. Veronica, a woman clearly much devoted to Jesus, rushes forward to give her what comfort she can. She mops the blood and the sweat from his forehead and eyes, affording him some relief. It's an exquisite moment, a widow's might moment. As Jesus, conscious of the fact that her intrusion is unlikely to be tolerated by the soldiers, does he thank her profusely, but urge her to return to the crowd for the sake of his own safety, or for hers? Does she linger, careless for her own security, basking in the joy of being a simple service to her master? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of thy countenance, and we shall be saved. Who on Christ's dear mother thinking, such a cup of sorrow drinking, would not share her sorrow deep? The seventh station, Jesus falls for the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. It was not rebellious. I turned not back. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, killing the prophets and stoning those who are sent to you, how often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings? And you would not. Behold, your house is forsaken and desolate. Alas, Simon's help is in insufficient. Jesus falls once more. As he falls, the cross rakes across his back. Simon perhaps feeling a curious mix of sympathy for his prisoner and anxiety for his own well-being. Should he be blamed? What will his punishment be? The weight of a man's sin overwhelming, but it is also the cause of Jesus bending to the will of his Father and the reason for our very salvation made so clear in this acted parable. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not my will, but thine be done. For his people's sins and anguish, there she saw the victim languish. Bleed in torments, bleed and die. 
the eighth station, Jesus speaks to the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. And there followed him a great multitude of the people and of women who bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your own children. And when he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, What would that even today you knew the things that make for peace? But now they are hid from your eyes. For the days shall be come upon you, when your enemies will cast upon a bank about you, and surround you, and hem you in on every side, and dash you to the ground, and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon another in you. And what of these women? Were they among Jesus' friends, or simply those who were wrung out their hands at every execution? To these women Jesus sp speaks firmly. They must look to the prophets and to his own preaching and teaching and realise that they must weep for themselves and for the sorry state of mankind to whom God has given such great riches. The hour has come. They ought already to be prepared themselves and there is still time because God has infinite patience with his creation. Are we there among those wailing women? wallowing in superficial sentiment. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Those who sow in tears will reap with shouts of joy. Saw the Lord's anointed taken, saw her child in death forsaken, heard his last expiring cry. The ninth station. Jesus falls for a third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ has the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaves to my jaws. Thou dost lay me in the dust of death. Jesus manages a few more steps, only, and suffers another crushing fall. Does Simon despair of himself? Does the soldier curse and cry out again, even more angrily? Does he hold a leash tied to a girdle around Jesus' waist? The fall is the gravest and most devastating of the three. Our hurts are as nothing. But what do we see in this final fall? We see how low God the Father has to stoop in order to enter into human humanity. He regarded man's fallen state so mercifully that he sent his son to bear the weight of that fallen nature. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. In the passion of my Maker, be my sinful soul partaker. May I bear her part. May I bear with her my part. The tenth station. Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. 
When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and made four parts, one for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was without seam, woven from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see who it, whose it shall be. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and his name inscribed, which no one knows but himself. He is clad in a robe dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. The journey is now over, but there is no relief. At Golgotha, much to the light of many in the crowd, some of the soldiers perform a party piece, a ceremonial humiliation of the prisoner. They strip him. He is laid bare. The scene pictures again for us the descent into humanity, accompanied by Jesus' birth, by the rudeness of the stable, the rustic hospitality, and now by catcalls and ribaldry. Jesus is helpless as at birth. Are we there enjoying Jesus' discomfiture? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. They gave me gall to eat, and when I was thirsty they gave me vinegar to drink. Of his passion, bear, bear the token, in a spirit bowed and broken, bear his death within thy heart. The eleventh station. Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. There they crucified him, and the criminals, one on the right and one on the left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And one of the criminals said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? All who see me mock at me, they make, they make mouths at me, and they wag their heads. He committed his cause to the Lord. Let him deliver him, let him rescue him, for he delights in him and there is none to help. With deafness and perhaps an unhealthy fascination for his work, the appointed person fixed Jesus to the cross, man's wickedness securely bound to the fate of Jesus, and man's hope is pinned to the cross with the piercing of Jesus' hands and feet. Mary and her nephew John watch this act of destruction in their sadness, can they see beyond? No, their sorrow is part of Jesus' passion. A few friends look on with Mary and John. Are we there? Have we sheepishly returned to the scene? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. They pierce my hands and my feet. They stare and gloat over me. May his wounds both wound and heal me. He enkindle, cleanse, anneal me. Be his cross my hope and stay. The twelfth station. Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, 
that is, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook and the rocks were split. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. I am poured out like water. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up, and my tongue cleaves to my jaws. Thou dost lay me in the dust of death. As this pathetic body, twisted in agony, gasps, it is finished. We know that the pain is over. We know too by it is accomplished, Jesus' mission is fulfilled, and by it is consummated, the church is born, to be nurtured by his blood and broken body, now and always. The mocking label on the top of the cross reveals the truth. Jesus reigns in majesty from the tree of life itself. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Christ became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. May he, when the mountains quiver, from that flame which burns forever, shield me on the judgment day. The thirteenth station. Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and at once there came out blood and water. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. And yet we must contemplate two more stages of blankness and bleakness. How numbed are Mary and John as they assist Joseph of Arimathea and the removal of Jesus' body from the cross. They scarcely believe the nightmare. Jesus must from now on look after Mary as Jesus has made him her son, him her son. And so doing so has gained for us that relationship. However, the son born of Mary is now placed lifeless in her arms, and she weeps for sorrow as she wept for joy when she nursed him at Bethlehem. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Her tears run down her cheeks and she has none to comfort her. Jesus, may the cross defend me, and thy saving death befriend me, cherished by thy deathless grace. The fourteenth station. Jesus is placed in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in clean linen in a clean linen shroud, and laid it in its own new tomb, which he had hewn from the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and departed. All of us who have been baptised into Christ Jesus 
were baptised into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Jesus, in the final act of those close to him at the end, is placed in the tomb, generously made available by Joseph of Arimathea. The body is set down on the flat stone surface within the cave, dressed only in headband and shroud, reminding, of the, reminding us of the swaddling bands in Bethlehem and his manger bed. This is the end of the journey. When shall our tears of sadness turn to tears of joy? The dismay of that dismal party of mourners is all embracing. However, we are blessed. We see the journey in the light of the resurrection, for we are the Easter people. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. You will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see corruption. When to dust my dust returneth, grant a soul that to thee yearneth, in thy paradise a place. In the cross of Christ thy glory, towering o'er the wrecks of time, all the light of sacred story gathers round its head sublime. When the woes of life o'ertake me, hopeless deceive and fears annoy, never shall the cross forsake me, lo, it glows with peace and joy. When the sun of bliss is beaming, light and love upon the, my way, from the cross the radiant streaming adds more lustre to the day. Bane and blessing, pain and pleasure, by the cross are sanctified, Peace is there that knows no measure, joys that through all time abide. Lord Jesus Christ, our merciful High Priest, who suffered a pure offering to make sinners one with the Father by the wonderful power of your life, your sufferings and your death, grant us grace, we pray, to die to sin and live for you alone, through the saving power of your life and death, who live and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. May the cross of the Son of God, who is mightier than all the hosts of Satan, and more glorious than all the angels of heaven, abide with you in your going out and your coming in. By day and by night, at morning and at evening, at all times and in all places, may it protect and defend you from the wrath of evil men, from the assaults of evil spirits, from all foes visible and invisible, from the snares of the devil, from all low passions that beguile the soul and body. May it guard and protect and deliver you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.